So that's butte. No double bond, so it's an, it's an amine. And we can't forget again, it's one butanamine. All right, then we have some substituents. Well, over here we have an ethyl substituent. So that would be N ethyl. And over here, since this we decided was not the parent chain, this is a substituent as well. This is a methyl. Methyl would prefer over ethyl? No, it would my mistake. Thanks. Yeah, but also don't you have to put don't you have to show that the you don't say N methyl because the methyl's not attached to the N. Yeah, you say two methyl. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's right. You say two methyl, and then you say N ethyl. This really shows that this really reinforces the point that one of you made before, which is that the n is functioning just like a number. The n is functioning just like the number. We're just treating this like just one more substituent. But instead of being, instead of this substituent being on the number one carbon or the number two carbon or the number three carbon or the number four carbon, it's on the nitrogen. So we don't use one, two, three, or four as the locator. We just use n. Can you say one butanamine? Thank you. That was my mistake. I did. So we need a whole bunch of locators. That's right. All right, and this is not coming first because it has the N. It's coming first because of the alphabetical order. Ethyl comes before methyl. All right, so um, the, the main thing I wanted to emphasize here was treat the N just like any other locator. So there could be other substituents. And if there are other substituents, you just name them with their own locator. Um, that's something that you're likely to see. Uh, incidentally, this is a stereo center, but I didn't tell you, give you did watch, uh, wedges or dashes, so you can't decide whether it's R or S. Was there any stereo chemistry in the last test? No. Okay, so we'll continue not to worry about that. We won't worry about whether this was R or S then. Okay. Now, this is one that almost nobody gets exactly right the first time. So take your time and see if you can avoid uh, all the traps here. Almost everybody leaves out at least one important detail here. You guys I did get, I hope you both got this exactly right. Very good. The thing that almost everybody else forgets is that you need two ends over here. A lot of people say, oh, gee, I'm so great. I remember to say diethyl. They forget they need two locators as well. So we're naming two separate substituents here. This ethyl group and this ethyl group are separate. You've probably seen other examples where we said things like 3,3-dimethyl or 2,2-dimethyl. Well, if we're just treating this like a normal locator, if there's two substituents, we need two letters, even though they're both the same thing. So we have to include, it's important to include both of these ends, N and diethyl. And you remember that this is 2 uh, copanamine. work this out out loud because we haven't quite talked about this. Any suggestions about how we should attack this? That we will have a higher priority. Right. Now how do we know that? Um, have we talked about the idea that the more oxidized group tends to be the principal group? And more oxidized kind of means more bonds to oxygen. Well, this carbon has one bond to oxygen and this has no bonds to oxygen. So that would predict that alcohols have priority over amines. So there's three carbons, so you called it prop. No double bonds, so you called it an. We just decided that the alcohol group is the principal group, which means it gets the suffix. 
So the suffix cannot be amine. You can only have one suffix. You can only have one suffix, and the alcohol got the suffix. So we have one difficulty here. Well, we have a couple difficulties. Um, but one that, well, any other suggestions? What else do we need to put in here? The one. Yeah. Because the alcohol could have been on another carbon. And then for the N, can there be like three amine? That is probably the first Very close. Word. Very close. Three amyl? That's a little bit further, so you were, you were higher <laughs> before. All right, now we're getting a little colder. All right, now you, you wouldn't be expected to be able to figure this out out of our head. But uh, it's, uh, the point is that every functional group has both a suffix and a prefix. Every group has both a suffix and a prefix. It gets the suffix when it's the principal group. But if it's not the principal group, it gets the prefix, and that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out the prefix. Well, the, uh, the chemists actually, for once, did things very logically here. We know that amines have a very easy suffix, which is just amine. And they picked a very logical uh, prefix as well, which is just amino. You guys, were, you guys were pretty close. So this would be three amino. So easy prefix and easy suffix. The prefix is amino and the suffix is amine. Or at least they should be easy. Sometimes the easiest ones are the hardest for people to remember. I can't think sometimes students can't believe that the prefix makes so much sense over here, or that the suffix makes so much sense. All right, so um, this would be, and you have, it's good that you guys remember both of the locators. So this would be three amino, one propanol. Um, just like, so what's the suffix for amines? Amine. What's the prefix? Amino. What's the suffix for alcohols? O-L. And what's the prefix for alcohols? Hydroxy. We didn't need that here because the alcohol was the principal group, but in other cases we might need that hydroxy. So just like hydroxy is the prefix for alcohols, amino is the prefix for amines. All right, well, there's still maybe some other nomenclature issues, but maybe that's enough time on that, and you can uh, try to you can do some problems, and you can probably learn the rest on your own. Those are the key ideas. Okay. That might be the, uh, the last new nomenclature you have to learn for the course. I think this is just about the, the last new functional group um, that you guys are going to go into that you actually need to know the name for, for the most part. We've learned all the basic functional groups, so that's a bit of a milestone there. Okay. <laughs>